Uh, so far, we've made $2,800. And um, there are still plants and still wonderful baked goods, so we're hoping to lift it up a bit more. Um, I would like to say a special thank you to um, Linda Sanborn for doing the, uh, being in charge of all the cooking, to Connie Piper being in charge of all the books, to Sue Morrow for being in charge of publicity, but most of all, to Linda Webb for, and Glenis. sorry? And Glennis. And Glennis for doing the publicity, and most of all to Linda Webb for running the whole thing. I think this is a huge example of grace under fire, because as well as running the whole show, yes, stand up everybody, <laughs> wonderful, well done, Lynn. As well as running the whole show for us, she's also, while Christine's away, in charge of our second floor guests. And just a week or so ago, that duty included driving a lady to hospital in active labor. So <laughs> I think she's a good example of grace under fire. So thank you very much, Linda. Any others? Yes. So uh, the Crucible is sold out for tonight, but the Gorham Community Chorus has a concert tonight at 7 o'clock, led by uh, Gorham's cutest choral director. <laughs> Any others? Oh. Sorry, 7 o'clock at the high school. Anyone else? Well, let's, uh, let's begin our worship today with a reading of the story of Pentecost. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and um, we are going to read this story, and you are going to participate. There will be a few things you will need to know before you can participate. Uh, you need to know what town you were born in. That's important. You will need to know whether you're sitting on the right side or the left side. And choir, I don't know what you're going to do probably the opposite of what we do, okay? So that everybody on this, well, anyhow, it won't matter. So whether you're on the right side, you also will need to know whether you're sitting towards the front or towards the back. That's important too. So let us read this together. It's all printed right here in your bulletin. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them Now, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing people from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, the crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. We are from everywhere. Rochester. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow citizens and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. It's only 10 in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days 
and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs on earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And my Lord, what a morning that will be. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. People of God, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked people, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from God the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Friends, what shall we do? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children and all who are far off, for all whom the Lord God will call. And with many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them. Save yourselves from this generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Amen. God bless this reading of the word. So because of this, we can now say, whoever you are, whatever you come with, wherever you are going, you are seen, you are heard, you are welcome. You have always belonged. For thousands of years, indigenous people have walked on this land, on their own land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives. We acknowledge these lands upon which we worship as the ancestral, cultural, traditional, and unceded lands of the Wabanaki Confederacy, of the Indakina, Abenaki people and Pequawket peoples. We commit ourselves to the work of dismantling the ongoing legacies of settler colonialism. Now let's sing together. You stand and join with us as we sing, uh, the, sing A New World Into Being. It's in your bulletin.
Say with me the century of prayer. We declare God's mighty works with all we have. In a world where there is deceit and unkindness, we declare God's mighty works with all we have. We praise the one who has kept us safe and provided for us. We, we worship the one who has blessed us with holy wisdom. Let us worship together. Come, Come Holy Spirit. Spirit. Shall we say together or sing together the response? Well, she's a very nice dog. I didn't get she is. Here last time, I oh, I'm sorry. you did? But you're here today. Yeah, 
That's important. Do you want to be the first kid to answer my question today? No, that's okay. All right. <laughs> Who does want to be the first kid to answer a question today? It's a very, very easy question. You can't even get it wrong. Anybody want to be the first? Me. Okay, that's the guy I'm looking for. All right. What is it, Tucker? Okay, Tucker. What's your favorite color? Green. Green. Okay. There's a bug. And there's a bug. There's a bug. <laughs> yeah. There'll be more of those. Okay, so... Green's your favorite color. You got anybody out here who has green for a favorite color? Oh, yeah, well, good thing if you're in the choir and you like green. Um, yeah, okay, so there's, so there's some other green. All right, who else has a favorite color? What's yours, Kara? Um, purple. Purple, okay. So there's an, oh, and Allie over here with purple hair. Um, <laughs> who else likes purple best? Me. Oh, okay, and you too? All right, that's quite a few. You do? All right, what have you got for a favorite color? Blue. Blue, okay. How about blue? Who else has blue for a favorite color? Okay, there's a lot of blues out there. There's always a lot of blues. Mm -hmm. Where is my dog? Okay, all right. She's never far away. All right, who else has got a color? What's yours? My favorite color is pink and yellow. Pink and teal. Pink and teal. Both of them the same? Okay, how many are out here who like pink for a favorite color? No. Uh, no. I like teal. I like teal. But you like teal? Okay. You like a lot of colors. Good for you. Um, I'm still waiting. Who else likes teal out there? Anybody? Okay, that's you. I'm still waiting. What's your favorite? Teal. Teal. All right. Who else got a different one? What's yours? Red. 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 <laughs> Hooray. Give me that. All right. Red. All the best people like red for their favorite color. How many of you like red out there? All right. How many of you that like red feel that red suits your personality? Yeah, all right. it often does. Red, well, all the colors, I mean, I like that there's lots of colors. And I like all the colors. Red, yeah. they always, red, yeah. yeah, all of them, right. That's, you're right there, Tucker. Red, however, is a special color for today. Today, in churches all over the world, people are dressing in red. Besides Eric and I, who else is wearing red today? Red. Okay, red. you got some. You've got that. Yeah, okay. You've got some. Why is red the color for today? Because it's love. It's love, but... Mm, Yes, because we often think of hearts, as red hearts as love, but that's not what it means today. Today, red means something else. What else in the world might it mean? Yeah, anybody know? What else in the world is red? What? Fire. Fire! You said it again. Fire is red, or people picture it red. If you were going to draw a picture with crayons and you had to make a fire, what color would you use? Yellow and red. Uh, I, know, I, know. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Orange and red. Well, a long time ago, the friends of Jesus had a moment where they felt like, this is going to sound scary, <coughs> they felt like they had fire on their heads. Would you like it to get? Uh, Excuse me. I like it on my eyeballs. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I once, yeah, fire on their heads. They didn't really have fire on their heads. It just seemed like it. And they were experiencing God's love so real that it felt like they were burning with it, like they were on fire with it. And that day was a day they called Pentecost, and that's what day this is. So today, we are to remember that God has... Are you ready for this? Set us on fire. Uh, on fire with love. Oh yeah. Is that okay? All right. Set us on fire with love, and that is why we use red for the color for today. But so you would still get burned into ashes if you had fire on it. You would. It wouldn't really be a very pleasant thing, so it's good that it wasn't really fire. Great. It just looked like they just felt something like they were just getting their, their brains were just set on fire with energy and excitement and hope and love. And that's what we're celebrating here today. You no. Know, you know why? Why? 
she has a favorite place in the world. And do you know where it is? Where? Right beside me. That's always where she wants to be. And if you took her in the other room, she would just try to get back here. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Probably. yeah. All right, let's say thank you for fire and for red and for all the other colors too. God, we thank you today for all the colors in the world. We thank you for red and we thank you for teal and pink and yellow and green and blue. All of them? Any others? Did we get them all? Oh, there Yeah, purple, pink, black, black yep. Gray. There are so many colors black. in the world, God, and we thank you for all of them. Amen. All right, thank you guys. Let's go. Yep, you can go to your class. Let's go. Our scripture reading for today is from the 8th chapter of Romans, 18th through 27th verses. This is Paul's words that he wrote to the followers of Jesus who were in Rome at the time. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. <coughs> For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen, no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit itself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And the one who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. I have seen it, and I have heard it, and so have you. This phrase that we read today, creation groaning. We've seen it, we've heard it. Creation moaning and wailing, and it's a pitiful thing to see. I began my work in ministry as a hospital chaplain, and it was a life-changing experience. I saw some things at a very young age that were difficult for me. The suffering of others and the pain of death was often too much. And I've seen people die. I've held their hands as they've taken their last breath. I've heard the soft groans and moaning sounds that are made as a person leaves this life and the wails then of the loved ones left behind. I know that sound. Once I began to know that sound, I heard it in other places because as the scriptures say, all of creation is groaning together groaning under the heavy load it bears. Have you heard it, the groaning of creation? Have you heard it in the sound of the city, in the air choked by carbon monoxide, in the atmosphere, 
and a voice that we would hear it groaning under the weight of just trying to stay clean? Have you heard the groaning of the cities and of the towns and of the farmlands and of the coastlands because of the growing temperature that we have unleashed on this earth? Have you heard the groans of a blade of grass as it tries to push up through the pavement or the voice of the tortured earth as we scrape its bones looking for more oil, more precious metals to burn to add to the air? Have you heard the sounds of the waves as they wash garbage up onto the beach? The groaning of the ocean as it tries to rinse the sewage, the syringes, the Tupperware out of its system? Do the streams and rivers speak to you of the poisons that have been put in them and flow through them? Do you hear the whimpering sound of the tiny hummingbird or the mighty tiger as it passes out of existence? All of creation, scriptures tell us, is groaning together. And human beings groan most pitifully of all. If we could hear all at one time, all of the groans and cries of humanity, how loud would that be? The sorrow of that would overwhelm us, and I am sure I don't want to hear it. And most of us avoid hearing any of the sounds of the groaning of humanity. But I do hear it sometimes. I hear that there is a loneliness in it, in the groans of humanity, a mournful, whimpering sound. It's hard enough to cope with everything that we have, work and jobs and responsibilities, with sickness and disease and death and grief. It's, it's hard enough to face all of these changes that we have to face that come with getting older, the struggle of trying to escape the stubborn past without this strange feeling of being alone as we do. It's funny. We can be surrounded by people all our lives and yet feel alone keeping our questions and our grief, our fear and our hurt to ourselves because we think no one really cares. And why should the world be like this? Why doesn't God do something about it? Why doesn't God bring, a, bring to be a world like we were promised? Well, I believe that day is coming when God will save us in this world completely. And for now, we have to wait and we groan. And this life can be really hard and really painful. And it can seem like it's sometimes it's meaningless. And God, we need you. We need your help. What can we do about all the pollution and all the fighting, all the violence, the explosions? What can we do about all the poverty and the loneliness? Don't you ever wonder why, if God loves us, if God doesn't complete the work that Jesus began? God, are you listening? Do you hear us? Do you hear our groaning? Well, that's a good day question for Pentecost Sunday because the day today is the day we celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God that is with us. And because the book of Romans tells us the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, speaks for us, is an advocate for us with ourselves and God. Now, would you like to stay here as I explain the Trinity to you all? <laughs> we'll save that for another Sunday. But here's the truth. The scriptures tell us that our groans are amplified and magnified and reach God in the totality of all they express. All the groanings of creation and humanity come before God who hears them all all the wailings of the grieving, the pleads, pleading of the needy, the whimpers of the lonely. God hears them all. And it is the Holy Spirit that enlightens us to receive God's truth that then carries our prayers and our pleas to God. At those times when no sound can be uttered, when there are no words to express the suffering we feel, then then the Holy Spirit speaks for us, gathering all the grief and pain and loneliness and into it, takes it to God as a groan too great for our words to conceive. 
God knows the suffering of this world. God knows how much you suffer. God knows how you groan under the weight that you carry. The difficulties and pains of your life, God knows completely, perhaps more fully than you know them yourselves. God hears it all and knows it all and feels it and suffers with you. Some of you have gone through some real agony, a splintered family, a cruel childhood, a broken marriage, a lost child. Some of you have known sickness. Many of you, probably all of you, have grieved because of death. All of you know how loneliness feels. And God hears and feels all of that because the Holy Spirit speaks for us in groans no words can express. It is a comfort to know that God hears. Just finding someone who will listen to you is always a comfort. It's good to know that our cries and our groans don't just float out there on the air above us. They don't, they don't just dissipate like smoke, but they are taken and amplified and heard. All the cries and groans of creation, God hears, God knows, and God understands. So we are hopeful because of God who created us and loves us, hears our cries. If that is so, if that is so, then how can God do nothing about it? Well, the fact is, a great deal has already been done. Christ has come and lived and died and was raised from death. The power of sin in our lives has been broken, and we are free to live new lives. Yet it's very clear our salvation is not complete. This is a beautiful place to live, Maine is. But it's not the Garden of Eden. We're a long way from heaven. At times we wonder if we will ever arrive. At times we wonder if we will ever be able to get all the way down Main Street. But remember, God hears. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groans of, ear, of, of inexpressible sound. And if God hears, if God hears, then God will act. Someday, God will act and complete salvation and creation will pass from groaning to singing. And maybe there will be quite a mourning at that day, but then it will be rejoicing. And I don't know when this is, but I do believe that God will make it right. The brotherhood and sisterhood of humanity will be found and fulfilled, and all who were once separated will be drawn close. And even the earth and the sky and the land will rejoice. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, we have one another. What we celebrate on Pentecost is a new creation. The Spirit of Christ has been poured out into all who want to be filled with it. And it draws us together into the church. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. That in Christ which gave him the power to love others as he did and bring healing to others, that is now within us. And Pentecost is a celebration of the day when God did something about the groaning by drawing people together into the church. And this is the essence of Christianity, that God has made us one. We aren't alone. We have each other. They say home is the place where when you have to go there, they have to take you in. The church is our new home, and we belong here. You belong here. This is the essence of Christianity, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, God's forgiven people are drawn together. And so we can change things in the world. Now, we can still find a million ways to resist it, but steadily, slowly, we are all called to gather together, to be one, to learn to love one another as Christ has loved us. Christianity is no place for hermits. How can you be a Christian without someone nearby you to love, since that is what we are called to do? And since we are all gathered together, we can start to listen to the groans of creation. We can start to feel them, and we can do something about them. 
about the groans and cries of creation that are coming out of the world in so many places. So many places. We can do something about it if we can work together and live together and pull together. Maybe we will learn how to do that. The Holy Spirit is working to make that happen. And won't it be a wonderful day when it does? When we can look out at the world and not hear it groaning or crying or weeping, but only hear rejoicing as we learn to love one another. Amen. Has the Holy Spirit worked in you enough for you to sing a song of hope today? Then let's stand and sing together. May be seated. And I invite you to get yourself into a comfortable position to open yourselves up to God as we pray. Sit comfortably, release the muscles that you're holding too tightly, and breathe deeply. As we pray today, we think about the places in our lives and in our world 
that cause us to groan and feel the pain. And there are many such places. And God, we believe today that our groans, our suffering, our pain, our loneliness is being brought to you by the Holy Spirit who seeks what is in our hearts and carries it to you. And we know that the Spirit also brings to us from you love and hope, peace, joy. So today we open ourselves to that. We accept the touch of your loving spirit. We feel its warmth today. But there is still such sadness and sorrow, such pain and loss in our own lives and certainly in the world around us. And so now we call out to you your, and plead for your touch on those places in our world where there is groaning. Let's call out by name the places where we hear the suffering of the world. God, may we never grow insensitive to these pains and troubles. We sometimes would much rather shut them out. But we would not choose that. We choose to be your disciples in the world, open to feeling and hearing the pain of others. And we pray that you will bless us in this work. And for those today who are suffering and groaning here, we pray especially. For members of our community that are hurting, we pray especially. And we ask your touch on them. As we pray together the Lord's Prayer, the prayer that Jesus gave us. O oh God, divine love, may your presence be ever revered. May your peace and justice dwell among us. May your love and compassion live within and between us. Nourish us daily with the necessities of life, sustenance for our bodies, and inspiration for our spirits. And may the forgiveness we give be that which we receive. The kindness we show be that which we pursue. Lead us on virtuous paths and distance us from evil. For the world is our world and your love our love, then, now, and always. Amen. So let's stand and sing our closing song.
alert. Stand firm in the faith. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be courageous. Be strong. Be strong. Whatever you do, and whatever you do, do it with love. Do it with love. God bless you, everyone. Go in peace. Johnny Cash. <laughs> Perfect for today.